Hello and welcome to assignment number seven, student data. Schools often keep track of student data. They keep track of students' names, phone numbers, birthdays, emergency contacts, credits, etc. Teachers also keep track of student data. Sometimes the data is the same as the, the data that the school keeps, but sometimes um, the teachers keep track of other things that the school doesn't keep track of. Sometimes they don't care about certain things that the school keeps track of. So there's a little bit of overlap, but sometimes it's not totally the same. So I have created a document with some student data in it. Go ahead and open that up. <clears throat> and then I don't want to mess with this original one, so. I'm going to make a copy, but you don't have to do that, because when you open it up, you're going to have your own, your own file, it's all yours. Alright, all right, so what are we looking at here? Well, there's several columns, school ID, first name, last name. This is the student's schedule. So Eric Magnuson, his school ID is 63. His first period is psychology, his second period is debate, and then he has art, geography, English 10, and science 2. His birthday is 6-4-2005. Uh, um, I'm going to call him here for parents, but it's not filled out. Who knows why? Extracurricular curriculars are things you do outside of school. They can be sports teams, they can be hobbies, whatever. So, Eric Magnuson is in ASB, he's in Fire Explorers, and he plays volleyball. Alright, there are a hundred students here. Let's go back to our assignment. Open the spreadsheet. Create a new worksheet and name it Teacher Data. So, we have been going up and down, left and right in our worksheets. But sometimes, um, even in the same file, in the same spreadsheet, we want to be able to have different tabs and have different information on different tabs. So this worksheet is called School Roster, and all of this information is on the School Roster worksheet. Our assignment says to create a new worksheet and name it Teacher's Data. You can do that by clicking on this plus sign. And rename it Teacher's Data. As you can see, there's nothing here. Create the following columns in teacher's data. School ID, student number, period, class. can once I'm done typing here first name last name birthday I can hit the tab key and it'll just go to the next one A teacher might care what sports you were playing in.
All right, school ID, first name, last name, birthday, and parents never changed. So let's copy those values from school roster to teacher data. Read the next step before you do this one. The next step says, highlight school roster A2 through L101, go to the data menu, choose randomized range, only copy the data from the first 60 students into your teacher data worksheet. So we basically have to do these two steps together. Grab school ID, first name, last name, birthday, parents. All right. Um, by the time you see this video, I might switch those two steps around because I think it would make more sense to randomize first. So go A2. Now you could click and drag this all the way down to L101. But I'm just going to hold the shift key and click down here. And that's going to select everything from A2 to L101. And what I want to do is I still want Eric Magnuson to be 63. And I still want AJ Cole to be number 6. In other words, everything that's on a row, I want it to stay with that row. So, Zay Jones, his birthday is on 10-26-2008. But I want to change the order of these things. I want to randomize the order of the students. So I'm going to go up to Data and go down to Randomize Range. And it should take all of the rows that are selected and put them in a random order. And there's Zay Jones, and his birthday is still 10-26-2018. 2008. So I haven't changed his student number or his birthday, I just changed the order in which he appears. Now I can copy the school ID of the first 60 people and the first name and the last name. So remember, this starts on number two. So if I'm going to grab 60 people, I've got to go down to 61. Because I didn't start on one, I started on two. I'm hold shift and I'm going to click and it selects that whole range. Going to copy. I'm going to come back here to teacher data. And paste. Except this column isn't first name and last name, is it? No problem. I can select all this. And just move it. You gotta, you gotta move my cursor until you see the hand. And then you click, hold, drag, release, and that moves it. Okay, birthday. I want the birthday information. Let's go back to school roster. Get those birthdays. Control C for copy. Go back to teacher data. Control V. Posts all the birthdays. Parents we would copy, but there's no information there. So we'll just leave that blank for now. Now, we could copy extracurriculars, but extracurriculars change. Sometimes you're on the soccer team, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're in ASB, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're in Fire Explorers, sometimes you're not. So we may come here to school roster, we may change this stuff. And rather than having to type it in two places, wouldn't it be nice if when we changed this, 
this was automatically updated. Well, we can do that using formulas. But before we do that, we're going to freeze the top row of this worksheet. And the reason we're going to do that is because when we're scrolling down here, when you have a lot of numbers to keep track of, you may not remember. What, what are these numbers? I can't remember. What are these numbers again? And so let's go ahead and click on this number one. If you click on these numbers over here, it selects the whole row. So I'm going to click on one. Now the whole row is selected. And I'll come up here to view freeze one row. And now it's going to freeze this row at the top. And when I scroll down, it just always stays there. So no matter how long my list is, I always remember that this is the school ID column, this is the student number column, this is the period, class, first name, last name, etc., etc. Okay. Resize columns and try word wrap. All right. Uh, as you can see, in some places, our name is getting cut off. We can do a couple of things. We could move our cursor up here to the line in between H and I and see how it becomes a double headed arrow. That means you can click and hold and drag and release and it makes that it moves the line in between the columns to make the column either wider or smaller. Now another thing that we could do so we could go to format text wrapping and go to wrap it's always set on overflow by default which means that if the words are too long for the cell then it just goes too long but if we wrap it now it'll go to the next line and it'll fit all those words in there somehow by making the column taller. All right, now we're ready to populate the teacher's extracurriculars column from school's extracurriculars. And we're going to use a new formula called VLOOKUP. So what I want is I want the computer to go over to school roster, find student number 29, and then whatever student number 29's extracurriculars are, I want the computer to grab that, bring it back over to teacher data, and paste it right here. And I want this to work no matter what order these names are in. Remember, we can change the order. In fact, I could I could select all of these. And I could instead of randomizing them, I could sort this range by column A, which means by sorting it by the um, school ID. It might be helpful for me to have all the students you know, organized by school ID. School ID. Student with school ID number one first, student with school ID number two second, etc. So how do I get this formula to look in this range find student 29 and return whatever his extracurriculars are. Well, I'm going to use a formula called VLOOKUP. So 
So equals v lookup, open parentheses, and it's going to tell me which arguments it wants. So search key, in other words, where to look. Sorry, not where to look. Search key, the thing that we're searching for. Now we could hard code 29, but then we would have to type that for each student number. So instead of doing that, let's just say use whatever number is in column A. We're in row one, so it's going to be A1. Whatever values in A1, tell it where to look for that. And we want to look for that in A2 to L101. So look for that number 29, the index. All right, what this is basically saying is when you find number 29 which which value out to the right of number 29 do you want to grab and bring back and so since the school ID is in um, the first column of our selection remember we selected this in our in our range the school ID is in the first column. The names are in the second and third column. All these classes are in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth column. The birthdays over here. The parents are over here. So which column is this in the selection? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And so I want the twelfth column returned. And then this thing, the false, we're going to put false here, and it basically just means um, this. If this was true, then when it looked for this thing over here, okay, it might look for it. What if it doesn't find it? Do you want it to grab the next best thing? If you want it to grab the next best thing, you put true here. If you don't want it to grab the next best thing, you put false. So we're going to put false. And I would say enter. And of course it doesn't work. What do we got here? Oh, <laughs> I put A1, but guess what? A1 isn't, um, you're not going to find this in the list of students. So it needs to be A2. And now, student number 29, Lamarcus L. Joyner, is in Fire Explorers working on cars and anime. Now the beauty of this is, if this ever changes, student 29, if this ever changes to, um, I don't know, Legos, and pizza eating, then it automatically changes on our teacher data spreadsheet. We don't need to update this. It'll update automatically. And now we should be able to just either copy and paste this in every cell or use autofill. But there is a bit of an issue with this. When we are looking amongst this information here, this A2 to L101. 
aren't we always looking in the same A2 to L101? This is where all the student information is. We don't want we don't want to look down here in the empty space. We have been copying and pasting formulas, and the computer has been changing the cell references because it understands that, you know, when, when we, a lot of times when we have all this information on different lines, we want the computer to do the same math on this line as this line, but we want the computer to use these numbers for student number 29, and we want the computer to use different numbers, these numbers, for student number 67, and we want the computer to use these numbers for student number 35, right? So by default, the computer is always going to basically count up by one when you copy formulas. I'll say that again. By default, the computer is going to co uh, count up by one when you copy formulas. But if you come across a situation like this where you want it to search the same area every time for all of the different numbers, you can basically lock the cell references. So now when I go up here, I choose this um, J2. And here's my VLOOKUP formula. And the thing that I want to look for, the student number, that's going to change depending on which student I'm looking for. So that's going to count it by one. I don't want to lock that. But I do want to look lock this over here. And so all you got to do to lock it is put a dollar sign out in front of it. And the dollar sign locks the column A, but right now it doesn't lock the row. And so if you want to lock the row and the column, then you need to put a dollar sign in front of both of them. You want to do that with L101 as well. Now it's always going to use A2 through L101. And it doesn't matter what we copy and paste, where we put it, it will always be locked at A2 through L101. And now when we autofill, we get all of those extracurriculars and they're always updated and we didn't have to type all that stuff and the computer did it for us which is cool calculate the days until people's birthdays okay this turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be <laughs> The main reason is because the people were born in 2007, 2008, 2006, whatever. But if you want to know how many days until someone's birthday, you're going to use you're going to need two dates. You're going to need the date today and then you're going to need the date of their birthday this year. So basically this this year has to update to the current year. And that turned out to be a little bit tricky. I had to look it up to be honest with you. Uh, it's kind of long. But what it basically started out with was, okay, days until birthday. Let's just start with, how do we get today's date? Well, all you should have to do is type in equals today, 
open parentheses, close parentheses. And if you hit enter, then you get today's date. Today is February 18th, 2020. So that's correct. So this is how you get today's date. Now this is the formula I found. I, I needed to figure out how to break up um, the day, the month, and the year. And this is basically what I found. And you would never know this unless someone taught it to you or unless you went and found it on the internet. But there's a formula called text or a function called text and it will make some text for you. What is that text going to be? Well, you can take a cell and you can format the information in that cell and turn it into text. So, remember, this is the today function. Let's just see so we've got a birthday in G3. So let's go equals text g3. Okay, that's right. I want I want to use this number, and it's a date, but it's still a number. Then how do I want to format that? Well, I just want the day, and it's dd because a lot of times the day is two digits. And then I close parentheses. And hit enter. And there you go. I just that's how you just get the day from G3. Okay. And then how do I get the month? I just tell it where I want to get the date from. And do I want the day? No. If I want the month, I put MM because sometimes the month has two digits. That's how you get the month. Now, how do I get this year? Well, now the number's not coming from G5. How do I get this year? Well, can't I just use the text function? This year, 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 yeah, today. That's what I thought. And the number that I want to use is not in G5. The number that I want to use is the today number. And I want the year. Now, if you put year, something weird happens. Twenty shows up. But is this 2020 or is it 1920? You are a human, so you're smart and you know that it's 2020. Computers are not that smart. There's a good chance the computer will be confused and think that this is 1920 or 1820 or 1720. So we just come up here and we say, I don't want a two digit year, I want a four digit year. Now it shows us that it's 2020. All right. So can we combine all of these things to tell us how many days are until someone's birthday? Well, I want to do a date, somebody's birthday, 
Okay, so assuming that their birthday is in the future, I want to take the 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 number that is their birthday and subtract the number that is today. And that should give me how many days until their birthday. So how am I going to type in their birthday using this information? Well, I'm going to feed those numbers in. Okay, I'm going to feed these numbers in. But I'm going to give the computer a heads up that this these numbers that I'm about to enter are year month date. And there's a there's a function that does that and it's the date function. So I'm going to put three numbers in there. I'm going to separate them by commas because that's how the computer knows that this is where the year ends and the month begins. And let's just go ahead and grab the year. Okay, that's oops. Don't do that, don't do that. What is the year? Well, that's today's date. Text today format here. Okay. So when this when the computer solves this, it's going to be the year of today and then the month is going to be Same texty thing. You can edit it here or you can edit it up here. I kind of like editing it up here better. Now I don't want the year of today because this date function wants a month. So what I want is the month of this person's birthday. So that's G. So I don't want today, I want the number in G6. Now, I want another number as a text. So I copy and paste that. Okay, right, and I want another number as a text. What is that number going to be? It's going to be the number from G6, but this time it's going to be the day. Now, when your formulas get real long like this, you need to pay attention to make sure that you have open parentheses, closed parentheses for everything. Open parentheses, closed parentheses, open parentheses, closed parentheses, open parentheses, closed parentheses, open parentheses, ha, ah, but there's no closed parentheses. So we need to add another one. Now every open parenthesis has a closed parenthesis. So now when we hit enter, okay, all these numbers should make a date. And that date is the person's birthday this year. Now are we done? No, we still need to subtract today from the person's birthday. Still need to subtract today from the person's birthday. So let's try, let's just put this whole thing in parentheses and then subtract today. And this person has a birthday on 227. Their birthday is in nine days. If today is February 18th, 
then that makes sense, right? Two days to the 20th, and seven more days until the 27th. So there you go. That's how you do how many days until a person's birthday. You don't need to totally understand it as long as you can follow along and, and get the right numbers using formulas. However, we're still not done. There's one unfortunate complication that we need to address. What if the person's birthday has already passed this year and their next birthday is next year? Hmm. Like for instance, these January birthdays, okay? Well, if you were to autofill those, you would get negative numbers. Do we want to know negative, no how many num, uh, you know, do we want to know how many days until someone's birthday and then get an answer in negative numbers? No. We want to know when their next birthday is next year. So now, this whole thing is how we do how many days until someone's birthday. Now we have to check that. We have to check and see if this is a positive number or a negative number. And if it's a negative number, then we need to figure out what the number of days would be until their next birthday. So let's do if this number is positive in other words, if it's greater than zero, oops, then I'm going to put a comma. Because when we do these if functions, we're saying, if this is true, then do this. And there's another comma, and we will say, otherwise, do something else. So, if their birthday is greater than zero, then put the original calculation. Control copy, control V. So if this is greater than zero, then put it. Comma, okay, otherwise, and it's showing you where you are here. So if the first thing you put is um, the thing to evaluate, second thing you put is what to do if true, the third thing is what to do if false. Now what if this is not positive? What if it's negative? Well, then we just add 365 because the person's next birthday is going to be 365 days from their last birthday, right? I know, leap year, but we're trying to keep it simple. As simple as possible, anyways. So, if this is not greater than zero, then take this thing and just add 365 to it. So, copy, paste, plus 365. And now we got to check and make sure that we got all of our parentheses, and I think we're missing one there. There's usually a, a parentheses at the very end of these formulas. And enter. And now, instead of negative numbers, we should get positive numbers, less than 365. If we get more than 365, then we did something wrong, right? Because the person's next birthday can't be more than 365 days away. And it looks like we are good to go. Just autofill those down, give them a quick check. Looks good. And the last thing we want to do We can 
tell the computer to point out when someone has a birthday within two weeks. And we can have it change the appearance of these numbers if they're coming up in two weeks. And that's called conditional formatting. So let's highlight all these numbers. Go up to data. Um, sorry, go to format. Conditional formatting. And conditional formatting, okay, I want you to look at H2, H61, H2 through H61, excuse me. And there's different options here, but if any of these numbers are less than 15, because two weeks is 14 days, so if any of these are less than 15, I want you to turn it red and let me know that they've got a birthday coming up. How many birthdays do we have coming up in the next two weeks? We got four, right? And we know that because all of the birthdays that are coming up within the next two weeks are highlighted red. All right, I hope that was helpful.